So in these problems, what we want to do is look at uh, situations where we've got the substitution, but it's in terms of the new variable. So instead of saying all well, u is equal to something in terms of x, our expression's in terms of x, but then we have x in terms of u. So we have to manipulate it around because we, we can well, we can manipulate it whichever way we like once we've got an expression there or an equation. So in this case, x is equal to one fifth of u squared minus one. Um, so if we get 5x there is equal to u squared minus 1, we can do that manipulation. So because we've got a 1 plus 5x, so u would be the square root of 1 plus 5x when we manipulate it round, um, because x is 1 fifth of u squared minus 1. So we can see that we can get that manipulation. We can get dx is equal to 2 fifths of u as well, because it's 1 fifth of 2 would multiple uh, u squared would differentiate to 2u so that's where we get the two u fifths of u du so we can do the substitution for dx two fifths u du and the square root of 1 plus 5x becomes the square root of 1 plus u squared minus 1 because 5x was u squared minus 1 so we can we can see that um, and then we can see well the ones cancel we get square root of u squared is u so the u's cancel, we get two fifths of du. Integrate that, it gives us two fifths of u plus the constant, or two fifths of the square root of one plus five squared, up uh, five x. So let's have a look at another example. This time we're given one where three x is equal to u squared plus one. So three dx is equal to two u du, or dx is equal to two thirds of u du. So we get that manipulation. When we have a look, so that's gonna allow us to put in dx in there. Uh, we've got x and the square root of 3x minus 1. So we can see that u would be equal to the square root of 3x minus 1. So we're going to be able to do that, or u squared was 3x minus 1. I think we've done that substitution. So the square root of u squared, which gives us u. And x by itself is uh, one third of u squared plus 1. So that's where that one comes from. Do clean it all up. So u square root of u squared is this u, so the u there, the two-thirds and the one-third multiplying go out the front for two-ninths. That gives us u squared times the u squared gives us u to the power of four, and u squared times one gives us u squared. Integrate our functions now, because it's all cleaned up, and we're able to get our integration of u to the power of five out of five, which we make the substitution back of uh, for u, which is the square root of three x minus one. And then the same thing for u squared integrates to u cubed on 3, so we're able to make that manipulation as well. So in the next one, similarly, we've got x is equal to u squared plus 1, so dx is equal to 2u du. u squared can be written as x minus 1, or u is the square root of x minus 1, which we're able to do. And x squared then would be u squared plus 1 all squared, or u to the power of 4 plus 2u plus 1 when we expand it out. Do our substitution for x squared. Square root of x minus 1, which was u, and dx, which is 2u du. Do some cancelling. We bring the 2 out the front, and then we're just left to integrate that function, and then do our substitution back in of the u for the value function of u. So we can see how we can do that and how it starts to work out. So in this next one, we've got uh, cos 2 theta all to the power of 4 and sine 2 theta to the power of 3, and we're letting x be equal to 2 theta. So dx is equal to 2 sine minus 2 sine 2 theta to theta. Um, or we can write it like that. We can, or minus a half dx is sine 2 theta to theta. So because there's a sine 2 theta there we can and then we, we need to manipulate it a bit because we need to get a sine 2 theta to theta which leaves us when we break this out and decompose it of sine squared 2 theta which is 1 minus cos squared 2 theta which can then multiply out to give us cos 2 theta to the power of 4 and if x is cos 2 theta then that gives us x to the power of 4 this one will give us x to the power of 6 and sine 2 theta to theta which we worked out here was the minus half dx so that's where the minus half out the front come from times dx uh, where we're able to 
integrate it then get our function there and then once we've done our integration and we're happy with it we can substitute it back in so there's a process there some of them a little bit harder require a bit more of a, a manipulation and then it yeah, needs some working so the problems do get reasonably difficult only because the functions we're going to have to differentiate in the extension one and then further in extension two not just very very vanilla type functions they start to become harder because the applications are going to get harder of the mathematics you're going to do